This is a follow-up to video number 37 and 90,000 views indicates that people were interested in that particular aspect of how VBA can search through a data set, extract records based upon a given criteria and paste them somewhere else. That video pasted them to a different part of the same worksheet. What this video is going to do is paste it to a different worksheet. So I'm going to do this uh, trick twice. The first is simply going to be going through and finding all the records for a person. So this data set here has repeat records for a number of different athletes. These are the names down the side here. And um, so it searches through when it finds a hit, it copies the entire row and pastes it over here to a report sheet. And so I'm just going to demonstrate the code and then we're going to go and have a look at it. So when I hit this button, it's going to search for everything that matches this name. So let's change the name just to uh, see it change in front of our eyes. If I click the button, we can see that the code's running now and it pastes in about 30 records for Jerome Wallace. And if I do it again, it does it for Wesley. So uh, it's effectively going through the five or 600 rows on the data sheet and looking for anything that matches our player name. So let's check out the code and talk about it. Here you can see the Visual Basic Editor. We have got our file showing, and that is called EAF78. And inside that, we've got one module. A module is just a blank piece of paper where you can write code. And then we've got our three sheets. One's called Data, there's Report 1 and Report 2. And so Report 1 is the name we've given it. Sheet 2 is the name that Excel has given it. And it's useful to make sure you understand that distinction. So let's look at our code now. We've got three parts. The first thing is we need to declare some variables. And I've done that at the top. We tell it that we have two worksheets. One is where the data is. I have called that data sheet. The second one is the report sheet. And if I just skip down a little bit, we can see this section here, I set a value to these variables. So I tell Excel that sheet 1 is my data sheet and sheet 2 is my report sheet. The reason to do that is that if you change the name of your worksheet, the code won't break. Simply by changing these two lines, you don't have to rewrite the code again. We'll see that when we look at the second part. Skip back up to our variable declarations again. So we've decided we've got a variable called athlete name. We need to tell Excel that uh, it doesn't need to search uh, a million rows of a spreadsheet. It just needs to search until the last row of data. Now in our case, that's row 543. So we want it to stop when it reaches that point. Otherwise, the macro will take ages because it will loop all the way to the bottom of a million rows. Back when we look at our search criteria, we've got athlete name is the variable we've assigned. And where do you find the athlete name? Well, it's on the report sheet in cell B2. So what the code's going to do is say, all right, they're looking for Wesley Teague. I'm now going to go into the database and I'm going to search through column B and try and find any records that match Wesley Teague's name. Before we can do that search, we want to clear everything out. So I've just arbitrarily um, written down that there's not going to be any more than 100 rows. So I've just manually said anything between A5 and L100 to delete. You could change that to 200 if you like, if you think that there might be a few more than, uh, than, than I've got. It's just blanking out any existing data. Next thing we need to do is go to the data sheet, identify what the final row is. Like I mentioned, that should be 540 or thereabouts. And then we start our loop. And this is the real key part of the macro. We need to loop from row 2 to the final row. 
we need to look in for each row, that's I, we need to look in column two. And if what's in that cell matches the athlete name, then we need to select everything from column one to column 12 of that row, go to the report sheet, find the first blank row, and then paste. And so what you can see here is that I've selected cell A200 and effectively used the keyboard shortcut control up arrow. So let's go into our data set and imagine that this row has met our criteria. So I copy it, I go to the report sheet, I go to cell A200, you can see my cursor's there. Keyboard shortcut control up arrow. Arrow key down to the first available row. And paste. So that's the process that our code is going through each time. And it simply loops all the way through until it's finished. The key thing is it needs to go back to the data sheet before it starts the next iteration of the loop. It's going to loop through this about 540 times just to check all of those rows of the database. At the end, it's simply going to go to the report sheet and put the cursor in cell B2. So let's try the code again. Select a different name. Tim Watts. Click the button and it pastes them all in there. The second example that I want to show you is when there is two criteria. So the first criteria is still going to be a name, let's say Paul Woods. The second criteria is I only want to see games where we lost. So that is Colin G has win, loss or draw. So if I click this button it searches through the data set. There's a few less because we've got that second criteria, but you can see it's only losses for Paul Woods. Checking out the code, we can see that it almost looks exactly the same as the other set of code did. I copied and pasted it in. I had to add a new variable called result. Instead of the report sheet being sheet 2 at sheet 3, so that was a very easy edit. I had to tell the code where to find our criteria. Result is in cell D2. Currently selected as loss, but let's change that to win. Same process as before, we clear the old data out, and then we start looping through. The only difference is that we've got a line of code that has an AND in the middle of it. So it says if cells I2 equals athlete name and if cells I7 equals result, then everything else happens just like it did previously. Copy the first 12 columns, go to the report sheet, find the available blank row and paste. So our two criteria can be found in column two and column seven of the data set. Let's just check that out. Column 2 and column 7. And so we could change that to anything we like. We could have looked for a venue or an opponent or anything we wanted as long as we were able to make the code flexible. So as we can see, we've now got a double criteria lookup that's doing exactly the same thing as previously. Searching through the data set, trying to find records that match our criteria, and pasting it to a new sheet called Report 2. Hopefully that's useful. Plenty of people have emailed me and asked about this particular uh, file and report, so feel free to drop me a note to the attached email address and I'll happily send it through.